And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Elisa's Fortune. This is going to be our next deck. We're going to be playing an aggressive deck with Shadow Isles and Bilgewater with Elise and Miss Fortune for our two champions. We're not really focused on leveling up Elise. We're not playing many other spiders uh, besides just Elise and then like Hapless Aristocrat making a spiderling. Uh, but Elise is still just a really good attacker, right? Being a 2 3 fearsome for two. Uh, just wanted out here being a good attacker, and especially when paired with Misfortune. That's a good uh, good start uh, to the day that, you know, like maybe we have Elise on turn two, then play Misfortune on three. Maybe they don't have a fearsome thing they can block, get a good attack in. Uh, we we're probably not going to be leveling up Misfortune that much either, but we do have a couple of scouts with a couple island navigators in here uh, to be that. But uh, let's see, what else do we have? We have the really good Endure Star, right? We got Bark Beast, Curse Keeper, Blighted Caretaker. Um, just awesome, uh, that awesome aggressive starts that can happen with those. We also have um, a couple Zap Spray Fins in here to give us some elusive attackers that have great spells. We have four spells in the deck, three copies of each that are all awesome with Glimpse Beyond, Make It Rain, Stalking Shadows, and Unspeakable Horror. So those are all quality. Uh, let's see. And then we also have some Neverglade Collectors. So we can be draining. So we have like uh, some uh, damage from guns with Misfortune. Get some ping damage in there. And then Neverglade Collector also getting some drain in there. And then, and with those, and with Unspeakable Horror can do Nexus damage. Make It Rain can do Nexus damage. So with all those little pings, then we can turn on our Riptide Rex at the top end. Have our Shark with Cannons and cannon barrage them to finish them out. So good aggressive deck here, looks like. We're gonna be playing it over in Master's Rank. Let's rank up. We've been raking down over the last couple of days. <laughs> let's let's get back up there and rank back up. Let's see how this deck does. This looks pretty sweet. This was a donation deck. So the two Ds up here mean these are donation decks. These are viewer submitted decks. This one looks really cool. Okay, we got a really good test here. Twisted Swain, one of the best decks. Uh, do we keep two Cursed Keepers or just one Cursed Keeper? We're going to keep Bark Beast. We're going to keep Cursed Keeper, Elise. We're definitely keeping these three. Just do we want a second Cursed Keeper or not? Um, yeah, let's keep a second Cursed Keeper. You know, like, Cursed Keeper does make... Some of their cards, like Make It Rain and uh, Twisted Fate Red card, makes those worse. And I like making those worse. So I'm going to lead with Curse Keeper here to try to slow down Make It Rain. Be nothing left when I'm done. Misfortune, eh? So, you know, could just slam Misfortune. Could also play another Curse Keeper and make, make it rain even worse. That's kind of what I feel like doing is playing, getting my other Curse Keeper in play. Um, I don't know. Misfortune's good, though. Yeah, let's... Let's just go Curse Keeper. I like, I like making Make It Rain a poor choice for them. like that. So I either glimpse beyond and just draw two cards, or I try make it rain, and we have, they have six total targets, and I'm doing three things with the six targets. I'm going to try to make it rain. Yeah, we'll take it. Make it interesting for me. Oh. 
I don't know. I kind of just liked keeping the Curse Keepers of... I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm overrating Curse Keeper. I will certainly admit that, that I could, could definitely be overrating a Curse Keeper. I just kind of like how Curse Keeper makes a lot of their other cards poor. possible Mega Rain out of the six things, wasn't it? I don't know, I guess they could have killed Misfortune, but... I think I would, I would have rather them killed the Misfortune than, than hit... Um, yeah, I got... Yeah, that was the worst possible. Dang. Yeah, I would have rather them hit Misfortune than either of those other two things. I guess maybe them hitting my Nexus is better than them hitting Misfortune, maybe. Not while I've got bullets left. Okay, Island Navigator. Dangerous waters. Hm. Plunder Poro. Pledge of Perish. Alright, Swain's down to two health. Always forward. They don't really have good blocks, right? Like none of these things can block very effectively against misfortune. I want to do this right away. Like if I play Bark Beast and then they kill my misfortune. That kind of hurts. So I just want to do this attack immediately before my misfortune dies. No, don't hit misfortune. Ugh. At least they hit Curse Keeper. Play Elise first. There's nothing to fear. Kind of worried about Bark Beast into Twisted fight. Fate. So let's just attack like this. See what happens. Clear off. They're not blocking in such a way to represent Twisted Fate. They're trying to get rid of my fearsome blockers, it looks like. Um, we're not going to let that happen. We'll go Bark Beast. Sacrifice this spider that we just got for free. Now we have two fearsome blockers. And keeping my two mana, because maybe we draw Make It Rain or... Darn. Make It Rain or Unspeakable Horror. One of those two to be able to do... Nexus damage to them and then play Riptide Rex. That would have been ideal. Okay. I like Sprayfin and I like Neverglade Collector. Both of those. I guess Neverglade? I guess Collector. Kill 
keep us moving. So that was the problem with that attack, is that I don't have the, I don't have the scout or that block, so I don't have the scout anymore. But it, it saved me four life, so I think it was necessary. <clears throat> Glad they didn't have that plus removal spell for spray fin. Prepare the cargo. Dang. There is no excess when victory is at stake. They'll be blown in the water. We're going down to three. They do have the ability to cast you know, maybe they're thinking about casting this ravenous flock or not. Probably what they're thinking about. I don't think I'm even playing the hapless aristocrat. I'd just rather save the board space. For like island navigator and stuff like that. By my hand, the Noxus prize. Grand General! That was a good draw. We need some heal. Even if they pass turn, we still do one damage to that with Neverglade Collector. Nah. Close game. Close game. If I lead with Island Navigator, though, then they would they would have just attacked with their uh, with their thing, and I would have been dead. I think with the overwhelm. Well, maybe not. All right. Anyway, um, we're playing against Trundle, Aurelian Soul. Let's mulligan everything. Start with a new one. Oh, and one. Yes, I wrote that in the wrong spot. My bad. That first make it rain really hurt us. Mm, footprints here. Why did they pass and then play that? Why don't just play it? So we're gonna be fine. Our next turn we should have a really good attack. I know that turn we didn't really have much of anything, but our next turn we should have a really good attack. I don't know, they're willing to pass. Go with the flow. Good. This protects me from Avalanche. Again, why are they just willing to pass and just waste that mana? I don't understand what they're doing. So we don't get the Spiraling, but whatever. Don't need that Spiraling. Just really hoping no sweepers. Yeah, really don't want to see Avalanche or Icequake. Good. Because of course we have the Make It Rain and the Can finish this off. Okay. 
going to glimpse beyond this 2-1. That damage doesn't matter. Let's just get two extra cards in hand. Good glimpse beyond. It's a good glimpse beyond. Yeah, not running out cards, so that's good. And life total's going a little less. Now they have a ton of Nexus healing. Where's my lunch? We hunted for you. They'll see me sooner or later. But from every fallen, a new seed. I'll knock them dead. Good. Just trying to kill his weirding stones. <laughs> uh, now we're gonna be able to kill it though. But it's just trying to kill weirding stones, but it's never gonna happen. Finally. No, nope. <laughs> it's just never gonna happen. Again, don't really need to do three damage to the Trondol. It's not like I can kill that Trondol anyway. For the fifth time trying to, to kill this Weirding Stones. Alright, finally killed it. So they won't have a Rillian Soul Mana next turn. That's the important part with that. It's important to play Misfortune because then Misfortune has the vulnerable, not Neverglade Collector. This is gonna be fun. All right, so this is me going down to five, and then down to six. They're not playing Atrocity. They're not playing Shadow Isles. Oh, I only have three? <laughs> Th only three are doing damage to the Mind Splitter. need four. Alright, well, didn't even get to kill anything. These things have so much health. That was a good Bastion. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Infinite Mind Splitter is still a great card. Shadows. Dark 
darkness hides in my path. Forgive me. Alright, so that does two damage to them. I could attack with the other three things. But all they have to do is block one of them with the ice pillar. I'm at seven. Can I maybe stay alive through blocking? Yeah, I understand at least creates another thing for Neverglade, but all they have to do is block something with the Ice Pillar and they don't die. Great part about it. Another great thing about Ice Pillar. Well, pull Pillar with Elise, that doesn't help me. That's still two things dying. I need I need all three to die. I need Elise to die, and I need this thing to die, and I need my 1-1 one -one to die. I need all those to die to kill them. Ice Pillar can't block any of them for me for me to have a chance. Okay, you're saying that could have just done it for one free damage of just have Elise challenge this and then the 1-1 one -one hits them. Sure, it doesn't. It doesn't change the game at all. That doesn't, you know, that doesn't save me here. Anything like that, but. Infinite Mind Splitter was just too good. Well, that and that Bastion saving the Trundle. I need Riptide Rex to kill one of those three things. Yeah, we're playing super close games. Kind of almost kept the glimpse beyond. Okay, glad we didn't. Yeah, if Riptide Rex kills one thing, that game's probably a lot different. Or maybe if they, you know, maybe they don't have the second infinite mind splitter. I don't know, I could just pass turn. Not really what our deck's about, though. Hey, yeah, that's... Yeah, I guess Rex doesn't always win, right? I guess if, if you have... You know, multiple 8-8s... Eight eights and... Sure. You have multiple 8-8s, eight and then you know, something that, uh, a 4 health with regenerative, I guess, and you have some protection for it. Greenglade Caretaker. Guess I should've just led with that. That's your card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, I have connections. Keep up, keep up. What else we got? Make it rain? Okay. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Help out. Every... It's a 
difficult combination to fight through. But we're gonna try our best. Another spiraling in here. I would like to glimpse beyond these, but I can't. I don't have any opportunity to. Or I guess I had to pull him like that and then click glimpse beyond and then click OK. I guess that's my that's my uh, opportunity. Okay, maybe I did have the opportunity to glimpse beyond that. I don't know. I feel like I feel like going back to my turn. Like if they want to go back to my turn. I feel like that's probably the best thing to do is just go to my turn and attack. Yeah, just attack with everything. Troll chance. So I'm thinking Riptide Rex can, can do some stuff here. Alright, so they have another Ash in hand. It's a little worrisome, but oh well. Oh, this one didn't even kill that Ash. Doing three damage to them, putting them down to nine. We can go with the unspeakable horror to do the last point of damage to this ash. If we want. We'll wait on that as well. Um, yeah, let's wait. I'm trying to kill that thing during combat. Or maybe right here. I'm not too worried about them attacking for six. I'm at 20. Uh, definitely could see this being Winter's Breath. But. Stand together. Can't really do anything about that. Yeah, kind of expecting Winter's Breath. So Neverglade Collector would punish them pretty hard for playing Winter's Breath. I'll drain him for five. My spirit is an unquenchable fire. All right, looks like they'll let us go right to combat. Playing Karma instead of Winter's Breath. Stack with the Neverglade Collector too. By force of will. It's gonna be difficult for them to deal with all these things, but they can. Peace has its cost. The 
can only have one Harsh Winds. So they're just going Concussive Palm. I'm going to sacrifice my Rex so they don't get the, the free 3-2s. And I also drain them with this. Put Riptide Rex back in my hand. I'm happy with that. <laughs> yeah, I think they realized what they just did. I will just replay the Riptide Rex. Thank you. There's our old Bilgewater Noxus aggro, which I guess we played against Twisted Swain. Also. That's what we're used to around here. It's a little bit of an awkward opener, right? Like, I don't want to Caretaker the Bark Beast. I guess I just get rid of Caretaker. Just keep Bark Beast Misfortune. But Caretaker is a really good quality card, but we need we need the enablers for it. That's why this is awkward, whether or not to keep Caretaker. Um, I'll just keep it. Hopefully draw some enablers for it. Here, we're going to draw Curse Keeper. Okay, Hapless Aristocrat. That's an enabler. Yeah, this game was telling me, you, you need some Rip Tyrex in your life. And I was like, all right. I guess I do. I'm one of the good guys, but not that good. Let's just play the Misfortune first. Not a very good time for Caretaker. I could pass and see what they do, but instead of doing that game of like pass, see what they do, I think I'd rather just play Misfortune. I don't want to miss an opportunity for Fortune. One fantasy come true. Set sail. I don't want to trade the Spiderling for two damage on Misfortune. I know I have Make It Rain to be able to then kill Misfortune, but I also have Blighted Caretaker, so I kind of need Sampling. Say your farewells. They'll trade their one drop for two damage on my Misfortune, though. Love ya. Which could definitely be the right call, depending on what's on what's in their hand. It's a tough call. I like Sprayfin and I like Elise. Like a fish in water. <laughs> I would like to cast Make It Rain and just do one damage to all of their things. This is a risk not blocking at all. It's always a risk though. Okay. Could have been worse. But I wanted to just do one damage to all our things and no damage to them. I should start with Elise this turn. That should be my first play. And then Caretaker after that. I know, right? Ag yeah. Aggro does have a ton of decision points. Oh, man. Wow, what a great Maker Rain for them. Oh, I, w I wish I would have just attacked then. 
didn't realize that's what they were going to have going on. I'm surprised they went with the Demolitionist first over that, but... A little surprised. Hush now. That was a good make a rain, man. I was I felt a felt a lot better about this game before they played that card. You dare. So probably playing whatever we draw or whatever we get from Stalking Shadows this next turn. Right? Probably not gonna go Caretaker or Riptide Rex. Neither the flames nor the deaths can claim me. Ouch. That card's good. I guess we take hapless aristocrat. Really? Where are you? A pretty present you make. Hang them by their entrails. You have to get me out of here. We've made the most of it. Still don't get to play Riptide Rex next turn. But we'll go caretaker on the spider. So much damage. Still, just dealt eight damage to me. Well, I guess I could go Neverglade Collector. Yeah, I, I have to go Neverglade Collector. Well then. Play that too. So much damage. Those Noxus cards. No way to treat your queen. Yeah, their their make it rain was very clutch. Needed my if my make it you know like also if my make it rain would have hit all three of their their units or at least the two units that was attacking could have saved a couple of life there that could have made a difference. So yeah, we're gonna have some some make it rain things happen. Let's get rid of the navigator. You know I don't mind the navigator. Turn one, Hapless Aristocrat. Turn two, I guess, Stalking Shadows. Not the best time for, for Stalking Shadows on two, but we do have Caretaker on three. I don't know. Island Navigator is probably going to be good in this kind of matchup. Where are you? I must get out of here. Yeah, I thought we thought, thought this was a, a ranked deck here. I think this deck's... Powerful. Games have been very close. But I have to win in them. But it's been very close. Alright, Curse Keeper pairs well with Flighty Caretaker. And so waiting on the Stalking Shadows so that I get to do that on turn three. So I get to give them priority. So that worked out. Yeah, the new landmark mechanic is going to be real interesting. I'm um, excited to see how that plays out. How it takes up one of your six spots on the board and you know doesn't really interact. Doesn't block, attack, block, that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a lot of cost to play a landmark card. You have to not only spend the mana on it, but then it also... See, at that cost, like the cost of the mana... I'll play Island Navigator. And then, let's see, next turn I can go Curse Keeper and Caretaker after my Every first attack. Sorry, so you not you not only have that cost of the mana, but then you also have the cost of one of your six spots on the board. And it can't attack or block, help keep you alive at all. Always forward. So a whole lot of cost in playing that card. I guess it doesn't make any sense to kill the Curse Keeper whenever then our 
our 4-3 would go away. I do not want my 4-3 to go away. I was definitely hoping that they would have their 4-2 block my 2-4, my scout, earlier. And so yeah, while, while, while you're like spending mana and playing your landmark, and then not being able to have your landmark block or anything like that, your opponent can just be, you know, spending mana on aggressive stuff and be killing you. So it's, it's gonna be... It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. So I have I have one Fearsome Blocker, the Escaped Abomination, and then if they play another, like, Mist Wraith, uh, they, okay, they got Burst Speed Mist Wraith, I can't do anything about that. So I would have had Unspeakable Horror. So I was going to Unspeakable Horror my own Curse Keeper, but can't do anything about that. Whether it be in Burst Speed and all. Let's go, Scouts. Not you. You're not a scout. So taking two and going to nine. That is acceptable. I could, I could unspeakable horror and drain that and keep that thing alive, but we're gonna need the room. Really hope they don't. I really hope they're just not like you know. We haven't seen any Demacia cards from them at all. I really hope they're just not a Radiant Guardian deck. of mm. keeping my four three to be able to block mist rates right like we got to be able to do that so many mist rates and Having unspeakable horror with the extra mana, where maybe I can unspeakable horror them, then play Riptide Rex. That is very slow. Okay. So many mist rates. Yeah, GG's. Give them a chance. GG's. I don't know. I don't know exactly what I could have done but differently. I killed so many fearsome things with with Blighted Caretakers already. Just couldn't have enough fearsome blockers. Yeah. Yeah, we did, you know, they they had to kill me that turn, right? Cuz like Riptide Rex was going to was going to kill them. So just another another crazy close one. Yeah, just so like every game was really close. You're just on the losing side to a lot of those. Um, Island Navigator really didn't look that good in our deck. We were going real wide and didn't have room for it. And the the one once like you know kept on bringing along like a crappy one one scout that wasn't really important. It didn't look very good. I liked how Sprayfin looked. I could see I could see just taking out Island Navigator honestly. I I don't think. I think that was the card I was probably the most disappointed in, and I think that for the other the other like expensive cards, there's just better options. Whether 
whether it's playing another Neverglade Collector and another Sprayfin, or playing like Jack, or you know, like Jack the Winner or Citrus Courier, probably be going into those. I don't think I'm I'm that excited about the Siren, but the Siren would be another option. Um, but I, I think that I think that as far as like spells cards that cost four, five, and six, uh, I think that's that's the card that really disappointed me and and the uh, really that could have been better, that could be upgraded, that could have done more when when you're looking at these kind of cards. Um, you know, Jack can like tussle with a gangplank a little bit. Maybe that's the card. I'm not sure. You know, maybe maybe just play another Sprayfin, another Neverglade Collector. Maybe just play two Citrus Couriers. That could be it too, just playing two Citrus Couriers. But yeah, I think our, our deck is just going too wide already, especially with Blighted Caretaker and at least stuff like this that I think that the that we didn't that we, that the Island Navigator really didn't look good. But yeah, so whatever you want to do with these last two slots, um, you know, maybe maybe you want Abyssal Eye. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it could be Abyssal Eye, it could be Slippery Wave Rider. If you want a big elusive, Slippery Wave Rider is always underrated. So yeah, Sprayfin, Jack, Neverglade, Wave Rider, Citrus Courier, and Siren. Like any combination of those two cards, of two of those cards, is what I think I would recommend. Any combination there, instead of the Island Navigators and um, so. Wherever you want. I guess if I had to choose and I was playing this, what would I choose? I think I would choose maybe actually a Vengeance. Maybe just like one copy of Vengeance to kill something big. No, maybe... I think I would, I think I would choose two Citrus Couriers. That's what I would do. That, I think that would help us in our in our races. Because we, we frequently died, you know, like barely died, right? Like we, we were like... We kept on like barely dying. Like where if we could heal our Nexus for three... I think that would have been that would have made just a huge difference. I think that's what I'd do. I'd play two Citrus Couriers. All right, so there we go. So there's Elisa's Fortune. Um, we went one and four, but that could have been a, that's it's kind of crazy of like going one and four and saying that you could have been five zero, but it it could have been. Those games were very close. Um, but yeah, we were one and four. All right, anyway. Uh, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.